G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another C Sharp tutorial. Welcome to the part two of Arrays. If you happen to miss part one, which is pretty important, have a look in the description of the video for a link. But in this video, I wanna have a look at how you create an array of static values. So if you already know the values, what's a quick way of making it? how you can do some extra functions such as sorting and reversing them, and then finally, what an array of structs is, or an array of structures. So let's get into some coding. To create an array in the last video, you always used your data type, square brackets, and then the name of what your array is going to be. In the previous video, we then did something like this to create ourselves five separate strings. Now, what if I already know what those values are going to be? I can actually jam those values into the array in a single line. So if I use curly braces, like a code block brace, but then inside those braces specify the values. So for names, I might do Jill, um, John, because I'm so imaginative, Tom, Margaret, and Pete, something like that. Then what I've done there is I've told C Sharp that I want to create an array of strings called names and I have five values to put inside of that. And this Jill is going to be value zero and then John's going to be the index of one, sorry. Tom is going to be index two, Margaret three and Pete index four. Okay, and then what I can do is the same thing I've always done. If I want to print the first name to the screen, I can just go names index zero and then I'll do a read key so it stays on the screen. Okay, press F5, and you see that Jill is the first element within my array. I can also print every single one of those to the screen, just like I did in the last video. However, I want to show you a different type of loop, which works really well on arrays and another thing called lists, which is the next video, and it's called a for each. Okay, and what this allows you to do is a for each goes through a collection of values one at a time and it pulls it out and puts it into a variable. So what I mean by that is if I go for each string, and I'm gonna call it person in names, okay, I like to put a space here. What it's going to do is it's gonna go through names and each time it picks a name out, it puts it inside person. So what that means is the first time this loop happens, person's gonna have the value of Jill. And the second time this loop happens, person will have the value of John, all right? So that means instead of right lining names and then a count inside that, I can simplify this to person. And that'll print every single person to the screen. As simple as that. All right, so with that done, I actually wanna move on to the next example of how you can sort, reverse, and then create sort of totals, like doing functions on arrays that are already built into C Sharp. So, now let's say I've got my list of names, Jill, John, Tom, Margaret, Pete, they're not in any particular order. Let's say I want to actually sort them. Well, you could write code to go through and actually figure out how to sort these names, or you can use this built-in function called array.sort, and then you put the name of your array inside that. And the great thing about this array.sort is it works on integers, floats, strings, and actually more than that as well. So I created my names in this particular order, I then tell C Sharp to sort it, and it's gonna go through and put it in alphabetical order, and then it'll print out, hopefully the names, alphabetized. So you see it doesn't move that much, but it's put all the names in alphabetical order. Now I've had a request from some students when I show them this kind of stuff, is how do you get it in descending order? So if I don't wanna do it alphabetically from A to Z, what if I wanna go from Z to A? Okay, well then we wanna reverse the array after we've sorted it. So you perform just a normal array sort, and then you use an array, array, I can't speak this morning, reverse, to get it in descending order, or Z to A. You see it goes from Tom to Jill now. And those are two real basic functions that are built into Visual Basic. I would suggest at one point or another, if you do use things like array sort, actually try and write your own sorting function just to test your ability, okay? Because this is all well and good using array.sort, but if you use another programming language, that might not be available to you. And plus, it's just good practice to try it out. I'm gonna comment this stuff out, and we're gonna try the next example. I'm just gonna work with some numbers. So if I just go int nums equals, and I'm just gonna pull out some random numbers here. Okay, that number is way too big. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of that. And minus two, because I always like finishing in a minus. Now, 
Let's say, for example, I want to figure out if I want to add all these numbers together and then print that on the screen. Again, there's a great little built-in function. Okay, I can use a console right line, and it's not in array dot this time. It's actually in nums, and it's called sum. Okay, so if I use this function here, it's going to go through my array, add them all together, and then print them to the screen because of the right line. And there you go, 558. And there's other awesome little functions built in to arrays. One is called min, which will find the smallest number for you. And you can probably imagine there's also max. And I think from memory, there's also average. So these functions are built by Microsoft to go through and work on the numbers for you and do a bit of the heavy lifting. Pretty simple stuff, okay? Now, because I am a big stickler for writing some of this code yourself, I wanna quickly show you how you can write your own sum function instead of using the built-in one. So that means I'm gonna get rid of these lines here. So pause the video if you wanna see it. And what I'm gonna do is bring in that for each function we had there. But before I do, I'm gonna create a variable to store the total of these values. Use a for each. So for every number in nums, what I wanna do is add that number to my total. So total plus equals number. And then instead of printing the sum, I'm just gonna print total. Okay, let's run that code. And you see I get the exact same value that I did in the sum. So you might wonder why the heck would I actually write the code manually rather than using the dot sum function. Because sometimes you don't know how efficient the code is because somebody else wrote it and you never know what they did. And the second thing is just good practice to try some of these things so it increases your knowledge when you're working with, in oh sorry, not integers, well, it does a little bit, but arrays and things like that. But that actually brings me to the last thing that I wanna do in this video, and that's create an array of structs, okay? So once again, I'm actually going to delete this code rather than comment it out. So pause the video if you wanna keep working on this stuff. But for the moment, I'm actually just going to highlight all the code that we wrote and delete that. And I'm going to create a quick struct up here. And what I'm gonna do, I always like to use a student as a struct because it's really simple to do um, things like first name and then last name and then age. Okay, so in the structs video when I created a struct, I simply had to declare a student down here such as this and then I would go student one dot first name equals John. And then whoops, student one dot last name equals uh, Jackson, because I'm so interesting. Okay, and this is the simple way. Oh, I should probably put an age in there too, shouldn't I? So this is a simple way that we can create a single student and we can put some data within that student. Now I can also create a second student and do the exact same thing. Now, how would we create something like an array of students, okay? Same thing that we've done in the past. So if I go student, square braces, students, and then I've got to specify how many students do I want, like in the last video. So I'll go new student, and let's go three, because I don't want that many of them, okay? This is easily how I can create an array of students. And then I've just got to start filling it up with some data. So for example, if I want to access the first student, so students zero dot first name equals John. Okay, so the only difference now is I'm providing the index of which student I'm working with. And this is a really easy way to create an array of students. Come on, age. My touchpad's not going too great today either. It's too early in the morning for it. Okay. And then if I want to start working on the second student, okay, I'm not going to do three in this video, just two. Then I just simply change the position number to go to the next student. And then I just start changing the data. This is how imaginative I am this morning. And there you go. But however, if we want to print those to the screen, for example, if I just go students zero, Unfortunately, because student zero is a struct, it's just going to print that it's a struct called student. So you actually have to do dot first name, dot last name, and dot age in this particular example. Which might seem a little bit tedious, but this 
looks a lot neater than creating three individual students. Okay. Anyway, that's pretty much the video for today, everybody. In the next video, I want to talk to you about what a list is. And it's very similar to an array. So hopefully I've given you a good grasp on what they are. And we can move on and create a list. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want to like, subscribe, and comment, they're down the bottom. You know where they are. But I'm going to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.